Hi everyone, and welcome to the channel. In this episode of Propagation Races, I'll be looking to see if honey can help me clone and root my plants faster. I'll be taking cuttings of tomato plants and trying to root them with different methods and different types of honey to see if roots grow faster. There's a lot of conflicting information on the internet and I'm gonna try and get to the bottom of what works the best. So let's get started. Here are the plants that I'll be taking cuttings from. I've got two plants here that are about four to five weeks old. Both of them were started at the exact same time and have been going through the same growing conditions. They're similar in size and both have a number of small suckers or new stems beginning to grow. I'm gonna be cutting those stems and trying to propagate them. I'm gonna be testing two different types of honey. The first being pasteurized honey, which has gone through a filtration and treatment process to be more refined and ready for consumption. And the second type is pure raw honey. This is straight from the hive and nothing has been done to it. In our first episode of Propagation Races, I was testing numerous sizes of cannabis cuttings to see what would root the quickest. It seemed as though the number of leaves left on any stem didn't really impact how quick that plant propagated. With that in mind, I'm not gonna be too picky about getting these cuttings all the same. However, I am gonna try and have them relatively uniform. I'm cutting all of the lower branches off and making sure to cut the bottom of the stem on a 45 degree angle. I'm looking to increase the surface area of that bottom stem. This is gonna allow the plant to more easily absorb water and hopefully quicken the propagation process. I'm placing each of these cuttings into water immediately so that they're not drying out while I'm preparing the different honey scenarios. First up, I'll be testing the dip technique where I'm gonna be taking these cuttings and simply dipping the stem into our different types of honey. Once they've got a good coating on them, I'm gonna move them into a propagation reservoir, which is just a jar with regular tap water in it. I haven't done anything to pH or reverse osmosis or distill the water or anything crazy. It's just water from my tap, simple as that. I'm gonna repeat the exact same steps this time with the pasteurized honey to see if there's any differences in performance between the raw and pasteurized honey. Lastly, I'm gonna take a third cutting and put it in the same water that the other two had. This water is the same temperature taken from the same source and this will be our control. Our second method that I'll be testing involves boiling the water before mixing in the honey. There's a lot of conflicting information about this method. Some people say it's necessary. Others say that the boiling water will kill off a lot of the beneficial bacteria and hormones within the honey. Here I'm attempting to pour equal amounts of water into each of my three reservoirs. From here, I'll be adding honey into the reservoirs. There's no exact science to how much honey is needed but I'm adding about a teaspoon or so of each and trying to be consistent between the two different types of honey. At this point, they tell you to make sure your honey gets mixed in and diluted properly throughout your hot water. I let the water in these reservoirs cool down to room temperature before placing my plants inside. Once again, I have a control of just tap water which is the same temperature and went through the same process as these other two reservoirs. I ultimately decided to tape my cuttings into place within the reservoirs. I wanted to make sure that each of them was submerged a pretty equal distance within the water, and I didn't want my plants falling down inside of those jars, as the leaves need to be able to reach sunlight and give themselves the best chance to grow. At this point, I moved my plants near a window where they would have access to plenty of indirect light. Fresh cuttings do have a tendency to dry out if exposed to too much light. They don't have a root system to absorb water and replace everything that they are losing through transpiration. So to make sure your plants don't wilt, try to find a medium light setting where they aren't in the dark but are not going to dry out and die. 
Rejoining these plants on day four, we were already seeing some early root development. Here in our water control, we have small roots developing. You can see a number of roots developing all over that bottom stem. Moving now to our raw dip scenario. These roots are considerably longer and maybe 12 to 16 hours ahead of the last plant we just saw. Moving now to our pasteurized dip. This one is not experiencing the same level of growth. There is a small bit of root beginning to develop, but definitely not keeping pace with the raw dip scenario. Next up with our pasteurized and boil technique, this one has some really murky stuff going on in the water here. No root development to be seen, but there seems to be something going on with the water. It just doesn't really look that clean. Moving to our raw honey with the boil technique, this one straight up has mold beginning to grow inside of the reservoir and on the stem of our plant. There's no real root development to be seen, and this is just not a healthy situation for the plant to be in. The honey in general was supposed to prevent bacteria and funguses from growing, and that was really the benefit of the honey. But heating up that water seems to have stripped the honey of those natural properties, as we have a lot of mold growth within that reservoir. Moving to our other control, this water was boiled and hotter than the dipped scenarios. We do have roots growing here, which is a great sign. It seems as though the warmer water isn't a problem for the plant, unless of course the honey is being added in, in which case we have the murky water and mold situations. Now we'll move into day seven and take a look at our final results of these plants. First, we'll take a look at our control plants, the ones grown in just tap water, it wasn't pH'd or distilled or anything fancy. And you can see we have pretty good root growth here. They're about two, maybe more inches long. And we have a number of roots growing out of the main stem there. They're a little clumped up, but inside of the water, they spread out quite nicely. Moving on to our second water control, slightly different temperatures in the water here getting started. But again, these roots have grown nicely. They are a little bit longer than the previous plant, but maybe a few less roots, a little less density. Both of these look quite good. Moving to our boiled pasteurized honey situation. Here we've got something kind of weird going on in the water. There's some sort of gelatinous film almost and bubble situation taking place. It's a little hard to see in the video, but it does not look like healthy, clear water for the plant. Looking at this actual stem, there's barely any root growth. A few small stubs beginning, but nothing compared to our controls. Taking a look at our pasteurized dip sample, we can see that there is some small root growth here. The water in the reservoir stayed clear and did not get murky. This root growth, however, does not compare too favorably to our control. The control is considerably longer and further along in root development. Our boiled raw honey trial has turned out pretty terribly. There's considerable mold growth within the reservoir and the stem has no root growth to show. And that leaves us with just our raw honey dip trial. This plant showed roots about 12 hours before any of the other plants and continues to grow strong. You can see some of these roots are beginning to work their way up the stem, which is not something we've seen on the other plants. Comparing our raw and pasteurized honeys, the raw has clearly outperformed the pasteurized honey, which is actually growing slower than our water controls. Definitely do not recommend the use of pasteurized honey to propagate and clone plants. Comparing our raw honey dip to the water control, these plants look pretty similar. The root masses are pretty similar in length. However, you can see the raw honey dip has roots beginning to sprout out higher up along the stem in addition to that bottom root mass. Again, it's worth mentioning the raw honey did sprout roots just a couple of hours faster than the other plants. With all that in mind, the gold medal for this propagation race goes to raw honey and the dip technique.